Hello, my friends. Steve Wise here with you on this uh, Tuesday. I had a long trip with my cousin, Richard Lynn, and we were in his motorhome and went to Diamond Don's for the week. Had a great time. Great people, great fellowship, and we had a good church service Sunday morning. You know, when I woke up Sunday morning uh, in my cousin's motorhome, it was 37 degrees. And by the time I walked out of the door to over to the pavilion, it was 39 degrees, and I, my faith wasn't as strong as I wish it would have been. I, I said, God, who is going to come to our service this morning? We start at 7.30 there, and uh, I really didn't believe we were going to have a very big turnout. I was going to film the, the service, but it was so cold, and things didn't seem to be working out perfectly, and I just blew it off and went over there, and just hoping that we would get a decent turnout, and man, we had a good turnout. God bless us with a good turnout there, and um, the Lord gave me a good word for the people, and I'm going to kind of share that a little bit with you uh, that, that I shared at Diamond Don's. I'm so thankful for Don and Francine Rainey uh, for letting the gospel, as Trey, Kling Foss, and Sarah, Kling Foss, and Tyler, letting the gospel go freely over the airwaves. And, um, you know, I know I may not be the, the best methodical speaker or the best uh, uh, organized in my sermons here and there. But my prayer is that you would fill my heart. You'd fill my heart toward you of love and, and of grace and of mercy. Um, that's my heart cry. I tell you, religion beats people down, but Jesus lifts people up. And you know, I was religious for a long time, and I could point out the faults of everybody for a long time until God pointed out my faults, and he told me, Steve, you are such a fault finder. And I tell you what, I've been working on that ever since he told me that about eight years ago. And, and I don't want to find fault to people. I want to love people. And I want to help people work through things. You know, we do things that are going to create consequences. There's a lot of things in our life we do, and, and, and God will forgive us. But there's consequences that are going to happen at times. But we have to walk in faith and believe that God's going to continue to work out all things together for our good. No matter what, no matter where we've maybe failed or messed up or hurt someone or did something that we know was unseemly, you know what, God will forgive us for anything, my friend. But there's consequences that we have to walk through in faith and believe that God is going to work out all things together for our good. And you know, I, I hope you hear my heart, hear my heart cry for you, that Jesus Christ wants to build us up and strengthen us and establish us that we know that we know that we know that we're walking in the kingdom of God. Because, my friend, the kingdom of God is here on the earth now, right now. And a lot of people don't believe that, but I believe that. I used to be skeptical, skeptical of that at times and, and judgmental of people that really had that faith. But I'm telling you, my friend, God's burden burned in me that faith that the kingdom of God is in the earth now, with us now, in us now, all around us now. We need to just need to know that and believe that and walk in confidence in that. Because if we've made Jesus Christ the Lord of our life, we can walk in confidence and strength knowing that God is going to work out all things together for our good. It may not look good now, but that's where we have the eye of faith. And our words speak in line with our faith. And it's real important for us to do that. Because that way we walk in peace and hope and in love and strength and will fulfill God's purpose in our plan, no matter what. You know what? I talked out of the book of Philippians Sunday morning, and uh, Paul was talking about the people that helped him preach the gospel, the people that helped him to take this wonderful message of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. And he said an amazing thing. He said, I want you to remember those who helped me and Clement and the rest of the fellow workers, the fellow believers who labored for me, whose name, who labored with me, whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Actually, Philippians says the book of life, but other places it says the Lamb's book of life. Fourteen times in the Bible, it talks about the book of life, the book of remembrance that God has for you and for me. And my friend, we can know that we know that our name is written in this book of life and will not be blotted out, will not be erased. We can know that we know by simply believing what Jesus Christ did on that cross some 2,000 years ago for you and me, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Romans 10 says an amazing thing. It says, if we believe in our heart 
and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. We'll be transferred into this book of life or into the kingdom of God. They're synonymous. And I want to encourage you today to know that you know that your name is written in the book of life. And there's benefits when we know that our name is written in the book of life. We can, be, we can know that we're forgiven of all of our sins. Psalm 103 talks about this. Forgives all of our sins, past, present, and future sins. When we're in Christ, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to sin here and there. In fact, the Bible says that whatever is not of faith is sin. So you and I sin every day at times because a lot of times we do things that aren't in faith. But if our name is in the book of life, we're in the kingdom of God, Jesus is our Lord, we're secure in him. We're secure in Christ. No matter what little mistakes we make here and there, or even big ones, my friend, I want you to know that Jesus Christ paid the price for you and for me to be in the book of life, to live forever, eternity with God and all of our loved ones and everybody else that believes upon the name of Jesus. So I want you just to know, you can know your name is written in the book of life, and I encourage you to know that. Know that by calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus and asking him to lead you and guide you and strengthen you to be a testimony for him. That's what I do all the time, my friend. I pray, Father, you know the end of my life. Make sure I finish strong. I want to finish this race strong. I want to run this race and finish with a burst of speed, with a sprint for the glory of God. I pray you have the same heart. God bless you. This is Steve Wise. We're out. Love you.